Well, good morning and welcome to Christmas on the Couch. My name is Pastor Nick, and I want to say thank you so much for joining us this morning for an online devotional. We believe that there's incredible value and importance in taking some time on Christmas Day to really remember the reason for the season. Now, in these gifts and the hustle and the bustle of everything that you have going on, we are honored that you would take a few moments to open God's Word with us, and then after that, have some time of communion. So today, what I want to talk about is making room for God. In Luke chapter 2, verse 6 through 7, it says, And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. This is Mary. Mary's going to give birth to baby Jesus. So this is what it says. Um, that she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in snuggly strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Now, can you imagine for a moment the scene? Mary and Joseph have traveled from a faraway place to the town of Bethlehem. And I wonder if they're thinking that when they get to Bethlehem, they're going to walk through the doors of the Ritz-Carlton, or maybe they're going to go to the house of a friend. Because when you're thinking about the birthplace of Jesus, you're not thinking about a manger or a stable. You're thinking about the cream of the crop, right? We are opening up the doors. It's going to be the most luxurious spot because this is the Savior of the world. But when they get to town, they find out there's no vacancy. There's no rooms available. There's not a space for Jesus. And I think sometimes in your life, in my life, we live with a no vacancy sign. We haven't made room for God. And I wonder what your life and my life would look like if we simply made room for God. So they find out that there's no room available. So what did they do? They made room. And through making room, the Savior of the world came to be. I believe in your life, in my life, when we make room, God does miracles. God does the impossible. We see God do more than we ever thought He could do because we simply made room for Him. So here's what I would encourage you to do today. As you're going through the chaos and the busyness of Christmas, simply make room. Take time to open up Scripture, to thank God for all that He's done. <clears throat> Simply take time to make room for Him by making Him a priority in your conversations. You can make room for God by making church a priority. You know, we're ending one year and heading into the other. Whatever you need to do to make room, make room for God. Now, what I've noticed oftentimes in my life is that there are other things that are crowding my ability to make room. And so maybe there's some things today you need to get rid of. Whatever the case is, here's what we know from our passage today. When we make room for God, incredible things happen. Let me pray for us, and then we'll have a time of communion together. Now, Father, we thank you so much for every person who is watching this video right now. And we're believing, Lord, that you, you, desire to do something incredible in each of our lives. So today, Lord, we ask that you'd show us and reveal to us what we need to do to make room for you. In Jesus' name, from the convenience of your couch, you said, amen, amen. Now, uh, when you were at our Christmas experiences, you received a communion cup. And communion is an incredibly important thing for you and I because it gives us the opportunity to remember all that Christ has done for us. And so if you have that communion cup, you can peel back the top layer of it, which contains the wafer. And in this communion cup and this wafer, this wafer represents the bread of Jesus. The, the body of Christ was actually broken on your behalf and of mine. And Jesus came and he lived a sinless life and he dies in our place. The death that he dies is our death. His body was broken. So you can take your wafer and break it and then eat it in remembrance of what Christ did for you. And next is the, the blood of Jesus. And this, you can open the second part of the container. And this blood, is this juice is representative of Christ's blood 
that was shed for you and for me. The truth is, in order for you not to be saved, a payment for sin had to be made through bloodshed. In Christ's sinless, perfect life, through His bloodshed, we now have complete access to God. And so, we're going to take this and thank God for what He did for us. As we're remembering and we're seeking after God in this Christmas season, I would just encourage you, remember what God has done for you. You have been so blessed to be a blessing to others. I would love for you to join me next Sunday at 9 a.m. or 10.30.